Five things you need to know before building high converting Shopify pages for your brand. Better pages is gonna equal better scale for your DTC e-commerce brand. I'm Jeff, we built over 300 landing pages for seven eight figure brands, helped scale dozens of them past six figures per month in revenue. Here are some examples we did. We worked with Ramp Health, seven figure brand, increased conversion rates by, I don't know, 40, 50% from 2.5 to over four. Broglow, another seven figure brand. Here's a landing page that we built for them. So in this video, we'll be going over the five main actionables and things that you can use a takeaway to really implement to your brand starting today. The faster you take action on this, the sooner you'll see results for your brand. So five main things, we can get right into it. Number one is gonna be your offer. Second is gonna be your pre-sale page. So having landing pages. Number three is having add to page congruency. So matching the message of the ad to the page that they land on. Four is improving your product images. And then five is just placing, utilizing, leveraging your social proof and your customer results. So most e-commerce brands fail to scale because of three main reasons. First is they treat and they send all their paid traffic to generic PDPs. Their pages aren't designed for cold traffic. They don't match the angle, the message, the avatar of the ad. So there's no pre-sale, there's no beliefs that are being shifted and there's no education, there's no trust. So that's the reason why you'll see lower conversions if you're sending all your traffic to PDPs. Number two is not testing new pages, only focusing on ads. A lot of brands are spending all their efforts, all their time, energy, budget into new creatives, which is valid. But if your landing page doesn't support the ad angle, it doesn't matter how good the creative is. It doesn't matter how good the angle message is. The page needs to match whatever the ad is saying. Number three, which summates everything, is treating all traffic the same. We have different audiences groups based on their awareness levels. We have top of funnel, middle funnel, bottom funnel, right? The more towards the bottom you go in the funnel, the warmer the traffic is. So you need different content and messaging for those versus the more top of funnel who are cold, unaware, and don't know who you are. So basically just saying you need different pages for different stages of the funnel. So let's get into the first thing that you can do, which is to improve your offer and maximize your perceived value. So what could you offer that makes your ideal customer's goal, result, feel guaranteed, effortless, and risk-free? What is something that you can offer them that feels so incredible that they feel stupid saying no to? So engineering your offer to maximize the overall value. Most brands are focusing on discounts, 10% off, 50% off, free shipping, whatever, all that. But all brands do that and you're missing opportunity to create irresistible value that justify premium pricing. So you wanna build offer stacks that create perceived value that's far exceeding the actual cost. Here are four examples from brands that we work with and pages that we've built so you can implement or at least just take ideas and inspiration from all these. So number one is just a bundle a starter bundle, a, an offer, or a, for first-time customers, whatever the case may be, it's just packaging multiple products into one and having some sort of tangible outcome tied to that. So having a, one main hero product, two to three complementary products, free shipping, different value perks, pricing it with a slight discount, but framing in a way that where it's, this is like a one-time, one all-inclusive solution for your problem. This is an easy way to increase AOV, but also provide that all encompassing solution for your shoppers. Number two is having some sort of free gift offer. Spend a certain amount or get a certain quantity and you will unlock gifts or perks the more that you purchase. So in this case here from Zappy Cards, we have a free gift logic where if they select two stands, they get two free gifts. If they select five or 10 stands, they unlock that third gift, which has a value of $170. And the specifics, the functionality, the logic can all be changed. Um, we could even make it two stands, have the ebook free gift, five gets this one, and so on and so forth. Um, this is just an example of having unlockable, redeemable thresholds to incentivize people to spend more, to, to receive those perks, values, free gifts, whatever the case may be. Third one is subscribe and stack, incentivizing subscriptions. This is something that most brands, most of you probably have. But to take it further is to add perks, to add specific things that are relevant to them. So in this case, this is Natural Rems. We have discounts, right? You subscribe, you get a discount, but more importantly, or added to that are free gifts, like a free ebook, free mystery gift, um, priority shipping, money back guarantees, pause or cancel anytime, stuff like this. Just stacking up value to get them people or get people to feel like subscribe. subscribing is the superior option than buying at one time. The fourth is just this typical volume stack deal. You buy one for X amount, you buy two, you get a certain discount and then on. This is a client of our stray. They have one, two, four box options. And with additional discounts for each of those, 
And we also have the subscription versus the one time. So the more they buy, the more they save and simple as that. So overall, improve your offer, improve the perceived value of what you're offering, presenting, and it's all about just framing in a way that feels irresistible and tangible and increasing the overall value of what it is you're proposing. All examples that are shown are real client work that we've done created by our team. So you can visit daydreamers.studio to learn more and see more examples as well. So the second thing that you can do is to ultimately follow your customer's mind, present what's needed to ultimately shift beliefs and encourage action. So using bridge pages, which is just another way of saying using landing pages to sell before the sale. So providing the education, providing the context before you pitch them an offer. To simplify all this, there's a lot of information going just to cut through the noise that you, all you essentially need to know are pre-sale pages, which are landing pages, like an advertorial or listicle, and then a sales page which is just a product page. That's all you need to know. There's two types, two main types of pre-sale pages that brands are using. Advertorial, which is like a narrative story-based landing page, and then a listicle, which is a shorter, punchier, more curiosity-driven page that's more scannable. And essentially both do the same thing. It's just to warm up your colder audiences before they get to the product page. So avatars you want to use when you're solving unfamiliar problems, shifting beliefs, feels like content, not a pitch and basic sections is to start with the hook, introduce the problem, present that solution, go over why it works, provide social proof, pr present an offer, and then get them to take action, which is then to push them to the product page. Listicle, super similar. The main focus is just something that's scannable, simple, quick, and you're focusing on pro solving problems and providing solutions, positioning your product as the ultimate the best solution out there. So basic framework is just like a headline, a hook, the actual list reasons. So three to th three reasons why, eight reasons why, like whatever the case may be, those reasons are just gonna be selling points, things that you can communicate that will get people interested and further down the funnel. And the product page, the sales page is where, it's for your audiences that are already aware of the problem, your solution and your product. So it's designed to close the sale and really focusing on the offer, stacking value, removing objections and getting them to take action. So really focus on the buy box, right? And the rest of these sections are optional, but the main focus is a really dialed in buy box that has the offer, pricing, urgency, and any like customer reviews as well below that. Oh, wait, by the way, guys, if you are running a six, seven, eight figure Shopify brand and you're looking for custom landing pages built, by my team. I'm going to leave a link in the description below to book a call. We've worked with hundreds of different brands. We have built 400 plus pages at this point. So yeah, all this is going to be available, but go to the description, book a call with me, and we'll see if we can help you out. And this is just a side thing, just to really just emphasize the point of just using bridge pages, pre-sale pages, just landing pages in general, instead of sending all your traffic to the product page, is you need to shift their belief in order for them to buy something. So because when it comes to meta ads, you're targeting cold, broad traffic, right? So in order for them you to get them to ship beliefs, but also want to take action is you need to think and frame your, your, your pages, your funnels from the mind of the customer. So making sure that they feel seen, making them or help them release, realize that they have an issue, a problem, understanding and showing proof that your product is the best solution for the problem, showing that they can actually attain and get the results that you're promising them. And then kind of removing that friction, buyer's remorse, and just providing a strong guarantee that removes fear. So you want to keep asking the question of what does that mean and do for me? Cause that's what your customers are going to ask. So you need to make them feel that they understand what you're saying. They believe that this will work for them and that they want and need this product. So write out main features, turn them into benefits, ask, go deeper and ask, what does that mean and do for me? And then just work backwards from there. Just to summate this is just using landing pages, bridge pages before the product sales page. Number three is in conjunction with number two is yes, now we understand landing pages and the use of those. Now we have to make sure that the pages that you present your shoppers need, ma are, is matching what the ad is saying, who the ad is targeting and what made them click. So instead of sending all different types of ads, creatives, angles, creative type to the same product page, you wanna make sure that the page that you're driving traffic to is congruent with exactly what the ad is saying. Does that make sense? So like I said, most brands send all their traffic to the same product page, creating message mismatch that kills conversions. Your ad promise is one thing, but your page talks about something completely different. So you want to create dedicated landing pages that continue the exact conversation, the motions, the promise that your ad is saying, and then providing that, that bridge with the actual page. So a basic overview of framework is having a video ad or, or a creative, a video ad, static ad, doesn't matter, 
taking them to a pre-sale page, like that bridge page that we talked about. So exactly to so the headline, everything about that page must match what the ad is saying. They click on that page, that pre-sale page to get to the product page. So instead of sending ad to product page, we have a page in the middle between that product page to sell them on what it is you're selling before they get to the product page. Because you can't expect someone to purchase immediately without understanding why they are. So here's a really, really in-depth deep dive in how to structure landing pages. The only seven sections you really need to convert a cold traffic um, shopper. And real quick, all these sections aren't absolutely necessary. They're optional, they're modular. One page doesn't fit all. There's no such thing as a perfect landing page layout for all brands. It's all case by case. And to kind of make this understandable or simpler is you need the specific content and the right amount of that for the right person at the right moment. So a landing page should be as short as possible and only as long as it needs to be. So when it comes to based on where your audience is coming from, what their awareness level is, if they are completely cold, they don't know what the problem is, they don't know your solution, you need to spend more time with them and have longer pages to educate that with them, to them, connect with them and build that trust. Bottom of funnel, for example, is typically be shorter because they already understand the problem, problem, they understand your solution, they understand your product. So you need to sell them less. It's more so for them to take action. So seven main sections or a basic framework is starting with the hook to garner attention. Second is to build interest. Third is to show value. Fourth, remove doubt about that value. Prove that it works. Six, make it easy to act. And then lastly, close the deal, get them to take action. So starting with the hook, hero section, everyone knows what that is, but the main point is just to grab attention in three seconds or less using a clear, simple headline that is so simple and obvious and direct that there's no way that you can misinterpret or misunderstand it. Number two is the problem section. So helping them feel seen and understood. So you wanna build that emotional connection by naming out and calling out their frustration, their problems, and really building that rapport and the connection with them, making them feel seen. Third is the product solution intro. Ultimately, here's the fix. So explain what the product is, why it works, and just introduce the, the viable solution that you're offering for them. Then you want to prove that with results, social proof, reviews, whatever the case may be, is to validate the product and your solution through your customer's experiences that they have with you. Star ratings, reviews, UGCs, quotes, before and afters, press badges, what, all that contributes to build that trust and prove that your product can get them the desired result. Number five is just to make it make sense, present how the product works, how they're able to get that result. So the logic, the science, the uniqueness, whatever the, whatever unique mechanism that you have that allows for you to stand out from everyone else. So it could be a specific feature, like an ingredient that you have, or even just like a brand mission, like a founder story to kind of present a story, something to differentiate yourself. Um, so that is purely up to you and based on what your brand is built on, built off of. Number six is the offer. So providing that that value, like we mentioned before, laying out pricing, bundles, discount, urgency, get them to take action. And then lastly, it's just like a final recap of a final call to action. Um, this is where you can include any like value props, like the shipping, the guarantees, the returns, and all that. So the main takeaways is to think of these seven sections as tools in your kit. It's not You don't need to include all these type of sections on your pages. You just need to use what you feel like and think is necessary for your customer at that particular stage in the buying process. In my opinion, shorter pages are always best, but depending on where they're at, the more information you need to provide them. And also always prioritize clarity, simplicity, and flow versus fancy, complex, vague words, phrases, and messaging. Number four is to improve your images, your product images with high, high value content leveraging every pixel that's available for your shopper. So two thirds of shoppers are gonna skim your images before reading any text. And if you're those brands that drive all their traffic to the product page, your product images are gonna be one of the first things that your shoppers see. And most brands have plain, basic white background mockups that present and communicate zero value. So what you wanna do is simply provide value in your images instead of plain white background mockups and shots. So basic frameworks for this is hero shot, which is main hero product. and maybe like one headline talking about the pain points, USPs, this could be another product image mechanism. So like how it works is another one results. So any before and afters, any reviews, UGC guarantees, money back guarantees, all that can be utilized. Here's an example of a hero shot. These are our product images that we've created for our clients brands. 
problem visualizations, so some USPs, things that they're looking for in a product, how it works, mechanism, right? We also have the results, like a before and after, like I mentioned, social proof, customer testimonial, um, any credibility badges, stuff like that, like guarantees, risk reversals, certifications, trust signals, warranties, all that good stuff, right? So pretty much just leveraging the real estate, the screen that you have available, instead of using plain background, you can take those images that you have and then just add, essentially just adding text, adding value, solving problems for your shopper. Your product image carousel should in itself be a sales funnel where it answers, well, first it communicates the value, right? What is your, your, your promising, right? Like what the product can do, how it can solve the problem, providing proof around that, handling any objections, and then getting them to take action. So your product images, if you look at them, you view them as an, a mini landing page in itself, it'll help you strategize and think about exactly what you need to include in those product images. But this, these frameworks right here, these examples should be super valuable. And yeah, like I said, every image product image was designed by our team. Go to daydreamers.studio to see more examples and learn more. Number five, solidify trust and results to prove you can help them reduce friction and hesitation with social proof. This is number one, super important. A lot, a lot of brands are missing. This is to leverage more social proof, trust factors. Um, so pretty much placing different types of that proof at specific moments to address different customers needs. Again, these are all examples from of work that we've done, but before and after written testimonial, 100,000 guys use this product before and after here. Um, this is an advertorial, but use leveraging before and afters of what their current situation is and what it could be with this product. UGC videos, right? Showcasing the product, how it helped them, why they got it and how it's making their life easier from local business owners like you, super specific. Another example from Brogo before and after, this is used in a hero section. You can see that we're leveraging customer results, transformations to communicate the value that we're presenting. Basic written testimonials, but also injecting some, some credibility. Over 300,000 shoppers, people have switched. We also have press logos from magazines, press, um, injecting more credibility. And in addition to that, we can leverage different experts, doctors, like whatever the case may be for your brand and leveraging cosigns, other cosigns and leveraging their credibility to promote your brand product and all that, right? So all this basically just saying leverage your, your, your social proof, your reviews, your UGC before and afters, providing trust factors. And just to highlight that someone completely new can still trust your brand, even if they don't know you. So if you got to this point of the video, I hope this has been helpful. If you're a seven, eight figure brand looking to get new pages built for Q4, visit daydreamers.studio. There's more information about that. You can book a call with me. I'm going to leave this stock in the description below. You just have to um, opt in to, to receive it. Just throw in your email and you'll get access to the Gamma doc, the link to have access to this entire resource along with other resources as well. Um, there you'll find templates, swap files, figma designs, all that stuff that we've done available to you for free, just, just throw me your email and then we'll take it from there. So I hope this was helpful. Just to recap the five main things, work on your offer, have landing pages, use landing pages, build that bridge between the ad and the page, improve your product images. And then lastly, inject social proof throughout your funnel and your pages. See you next one.